Hello and welcome here to Faceless Guy. Please like and subscribe the video if you enjoyed it after the video. Now watch it and have fun. We start right into it. Geography now Portugal. Some countries try to fight the ocean, others are afraid of the ocean. Portugal practically wants to live in the ocean. If they had gills, they'd sell their land and build an Atlantis. Welcome to the powerful little sailor of Europe. The westernmost um, country of Europe, I think. No, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, it's Iceland probably. Maybe even Denmark with Greenland, it's the westernmost country um, in Europe. It, 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 it is probably Denmark. Or if you consider France, it's um, French Guiana, so... <laughs> I think. Maybe there's another um, uh, um, overseas territory from another European country which is even more west. Probably, and I think now about it. Maybe something from the Great Britain in South America, in the one of those islands, uh, the Sandwich Islands. I'm not sure. Anyway, this video, Portugal. Yeah, let's watch it. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. This episode couldn't have come at a better time because I literally just got back from a trip to Portugal with my mom. I met tons of you guys, the Portuguese geography peeps, and little side note. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is João. He is a native Portuguese person. He'll be coming in and out of this episode explaining things about Portugal. So, say hi. Hi! Anyway, let's look at the globe now, shall we? Portugal is sometimes called the door to Europe. It's the start to the mainland. The Portuguese are ocean people. They need to be close to the sea. They get uncomfortable without it. With that in mind, their country is pretty ideal for them location-wise. Portugal, the rectangle-shaped country, is located at the very end of the Iberian Peninsula, surrounded by Spain on all three sides, as well as two island regions in the Atlantic. They have the westernmost point of continental Europe, Cabo de Roca, and the westernmost point of Europe's domain, the island of Santa Cruz das Flores. Important note, Portugal has one of the oldest borders in Europe and one of the oldest in the world, very much thanks to this treaty signed between these two kings back in 1297. The Spanish and Portuguese have always usually had amicable relations in regards to their states. The only kind of dispute they have is over the town of Olivenza. This is not an official dispute, but most Portuguese believe that it kind of probably should be theirs because of history or something. Look it up. For what it's worth though, there is even a spot where you can zip line across this river from Portugal into Spain and travel forward one hour in time because for some reason Portugal decided to follow the UTC plus one zone instead of plus two like Spain, meaning that even though Galicia is on the same longitude, they are one hour ahead. Anyway, the country is divided into 18 districts and two autonomous regions, the Azores and Madeira Islands. These two island regions give a huge boost to Portugal's exclusive economic zone by over 1.7 million square kilometers. And with the time differences, I mean, I use only um, uh, your standard European time, and I think from there is this... Uh, um, Spain, France, Germany, Italy use is um is the standard European time and um Portugal is um an hour before this standard European time, which is also weird because um the same thing with Spain. This one part of Spain which is directly above them is still one hour um earlier than standard European time making it the third largest EEZ in the EU and the 20th in the world. The capital is Lisbon, and of course it holds the largest airport, Lisbon International, as well as the largest shipping port, the Port of Lisbon. The second largest city is actually Sintra, followed by Vila Nova de Gaia. However, Porto actually holds the second busiest airport, and Faro in the south rounds out for third place for airports as well. Remember, even though these little uninhabited guys known as the Savage Islands are closer to the Canary Islands of Spain, they actually belong to Portugal and make up the southernmost part of Portugal's domain. One of which right here, Pontina, is actually a self-proclaimed micronation purchased by some art teacher dude who bought it and then later claimed independence from Portugal in 2007. Keep in mind, these overseas regions, in addition to the Canary Islands and Cape Verde, are part of a larger oceanic region known as Macaronesia, not to be confused with Micronesia, which is halfway across the world. Yeah, that micronation island thing. That's a weird one. Look it up. They kind of have all they need in that small... Sp I like it when so such small islands or small places um, makes their own me um, tiny country or a semi independent thing, but they um, declare to be independent and it, it's fun. And if, it, if it's just an island, I, I, I doubt that anyone has a big problem with this, but yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Space, as long as they have the largest portion of the Atlantic coast on the Iberian Peninsula. I mean, he bought it, so maybe it's um, different in other situations. <laughs> 
Peninsula. This is kind of what allowed them to become the front runners in the Age of Discovery and European expedition years. Most of the first and famous explorers you probably already heard of, Magellan and Vasco da Gama, they come from Portugal. Ahem. Yeah, 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 you guys took the Arctic and Vinland like hundreds of years earlier. For what it's worth though, it's important to note that historically, not only were the Portuguese the first to kick off the Age of Exploration with the first discovery at the Azores and Madeira Islands, but they also had a vast empire at one point expanding across five continents as far as East Timor to Brazil and everything in between. The problem was, with the exception of Brazil, Angola, and Mozambique, the Portuguese really only kind of maintained numerous ports and coastal colonies that didn't encroach far inland with the connecting land masses. Their love of the ocean kind of ended up diminishing much of their land claims, and the majority of the ports were either fought over and lost or sold to other colonial powers of the 18th and 19th centuries. Nonetheless, outside of the sovereign Portuguese-speaking countries today, you will see small remnants of Portuguese influence in places like China's special autonomous region of Macau, with its Portuguese-named streets, and the churches and culture of areas like Goa, as well as Damam and Diu in India. Anyway, this segment is getting kind of long. Here are some places of interest that you guys, the Portuguese... It is always interesting this, um, that uh, Brazil um, now is the uh, largest um, Portuguese-speaking country, and um, the same for Spanish and Mexico. Mexico taking over for Spain and Brazil a long time ago take over Portuguese, Portugal, in being the most Portuguese-speaking country with the most Portuguese-speaking people. <laughs> For, for for England and Great Britain, it was probably the United States. People suggested we mention in this episode. They have 17 UNESCO heritage sites. Many of them are famous monasteries or churches or sanctuaries. Sintra has that cool national palace thing, and this grotto palace. Guimarães has that castle where Portugal kind of started. Ericeira is like the best surfing spot. Pretty much the entire city of Porto with its colorful neoclassical and baroque charm. They also have the coolest bookstore ever and the most beautiful McDonald's. Those Boulder homes in Monsanto. They also have the coolest bookstore ever and the most beautiful. It looks it looks much more uh, special than many other McDonald's, of course. <laughs> Interesting. I would I would I would go there. I'd like to go there. McDonald's, those Boulder homes in Monsanto, what, the castle of Obidos, Evora has like the best historic sites and even a Portuguese Stonehenge, the Coa Valley rock art sites, the world's shortest international bridge with Spain, the cemetery of anchors, the this is also art sites, uh, the world's shortest. This is also awesome. I mean, I've never seen this before. Maybe I have seen it before. I think I have to watch the episode before, but I don't remember. You know, the one that is Spain and the other that is um, Portugal, you could basically, with a long jump, even jump from one country to the next country. <laughs> or just walk. It, it, it's not far. I mean, it doesn't look far. <laughs> it's also, I, I would also like to go there. That's interesting. This international bridge with Spain, the cemetery of anchors, the Monte Penedono Dolmen, pretty much everything on Madeira Island with its beaches and botanical gardens, the museums. This one is even dedicated to Ronaldo. Lisbon has so many sites like the Belem Tower, the Geronimos Monastery, and every year there is a huge pilgrimage to the town of Fatima, one of the holiest sites in Portugal. Yeah, and that's the thing about Portugal. Like once someone finds a cool hidden natural spot, it usually gets exposed and invaded fast. And speaking of nature, that brings us to... Now, as mentioned, Portugal is an ocean-loving country that loves the sea and water. Nonetheless, the actual people do need to kind of live on land and, like, grow food on it and stuff. So, yeah, there's this is how you break it down. Portugal's land makeup, of course, is made up of the two main parts that fall under Portuguese sovereignty. I think the Iberian Peninsula in general is very mountainous. I am... So, also in the Spain episode, which I also have to react to. I will, in the Spain episode, I will also say something in Spanish. I have learned Spanish a bit. So, but very much this, I think. Um, I'll throw maybe other ones more on the east side of the Iberian Peninsula, but we will find out. The continental Portuguese landmass on the Iberian Peninsula and the two island regions of the Azores and the Madeira Islands. The continental part of Portugal is located on the Eurasian Plate, close to the convergence of the African Plate. Geologists speculate that there could be a newly emerging rift which could explain some of the seismic activity, such as the Great Lisbon Earthquake of 1755 that nearly destroyed the entire city on All Saints Day. Look it up. Anyway, the northern parts are generally more mountainous and hilly, with two main mountain chains the Northern Meseta Mountains and the Serra da Estrela, which has 12. 
Hore, the tallest point on the mainland. However, if we're talking about the tallest point in the entire country, that actually belongs to Mount Pico on Azores Island. Back to the mainland though, the country is shaped by three main rivers, the Douro in the north, the longest river of the country, the Tagus or Taj, and the Guadiana in the south, which feeds into the largest lake of the country, Lake Alkeva, which is actually a reservoir created by the Alkeva Dam. The south of the country, known as the Southern Meseta, is generally flatter and lush with the Sado Basin fed by the Sado River. You see even the, um, the lake and the dam, you don't see the dam, but you see the lake, the dam is creating, even from this, from this attitude, from this, not attitude, from this, um, from this height, on the world map, you can see it there. Interesting. River. Skipping over to the island regions, the Azores and Madeira Islands are volcanic archipelagos, generally lush and green, and mild to warm year-round. Madeira actually has a UNESCO nature zone, the Lorisilva, or Laurel Forest of the north side. For the Azores, they are kind of precariously positioned right at the triple junction of three tectonic plates, and the westernmost islands, Corvo and Flores, are actually located in the North American plate. They are beautiful green islands that actually kind of resemble the Irish countryside with farm plots dotted everywhere. This island chain is also the only part Part of Europe, if you don't consider the Caucasus part of Europe, where tea can be cultivated naturally in its environment. Phew, that was pretty compact in detail. And we didn't even get to talk about all the cool stuff like the cave beach of Benagil or this tidal pool. Is this looks amazing, but what's it? And we didn't even get to talk about all the cool stuff like the cave beach. I mean, there are many of these places in the world and um, they all look amazing. When you imagine laying on the beach and um, I don't know if you can go there um, or if it just. Uh, Drone uh, footage, but it looks amazing. I would, I would love to just sit at the beach. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if you, it's safe for swimming, but uh, just sitting at the beach would be also amazing. Or looking down from this, um, from the top uh, through the hole. Um, yeah, but anyway, interesting. Looks awesome. Beach of Benagil, or this tidal pool, or that. It is a HD. It's HD. It's HD. That place where the largest wave ever was surfed by that dude. Whoa, that was Portugal? Yes, it was. Look it up. In the meantime, you know the deal. I take my triple shot of espresso break, which means Noah comes in to fill in for the rest of this segment. Did somebody say Keith? No. I believe he said Noah. For one, they are masters of making anything out of trees, as over a third of the country is forested mostly with oaks, pines, and eucalyptus. Such Portuguese companies, like the Navigator Company, are world-renowned for paper products. And Amorium is the world's largest cork producer, and Portugal being number one in cork production in general. You will see tons of stuff around Portugal made of cork. Cork purses, cork shoes. Cork? What is this made of? I mean, it's made of cork, but what is cork? And how it is made? Maybe I uh, watch another video about this some other day. But I mean, in the moment I don't know what cork is made of. Maybe I'm stupid and I generally knew it, but yeah, in the moment not. Tell me in the comments if you want. Cork notebooks, cork everything, and they love their wine. And please subscribe. Wine with port, rosé, green, and Madeira wines being some of the most popular types. Portugal is home to many animal species as well. In the continental side, you will find mammals like wild pigs, wild goats, hares, foxes. The unofficial national animal, though, or at least a common national symbol, would technically be the legendary mythical Barcelos rooster. They're Europe's top seafood consumer per capita and usually in the top four worldwide. And of course, brings us to the final segment. Food. Some top notable dishes you guys, the Portuguese geography peeps, suggest we mentioned include things like the most iconic national soup, caldo verde. These two sandwiches are probably the most popular ones. Pastéis de nata. And finally, with seafood, they have everything from cuttlefish, crabs, shrimp, spiny lobster, barnacles, mackerel, lamprey, sea bass, clams, oysters, periwinkles, scallops, sardines. Dude, the Portuguese make the best octopus I ever had in my life. I'm not such a big fan of this kind of food, but as you know, maybe I mentioned, I mentioned earlier, I don't eat much, so I'm not the best person to judge eating. Um, maybe I will later make some videos with my girlfriend together when, where we um, try out some foods or where she tries out some foods and tells about it. She eats more, much more. <laughs> I don't eat nearly anything, so um, yeah, let's continue. Fun fact, the Portuguese... I'm very picky. By the way, I, I will also do something after the video, um, on the stream later. Let's see. It's 
actually introduced samosas to India, tempura to Japan, and England probably wouldn't have tea if the Portuguese hadn't traded with China. And of course, the most popular dish of Portugal often seen as a national dish, bacalao, which is salted cod, deliberately preserved and soaked before cooking. Interestingly enough, cod isn't even commonly caught off their coast, so they have to resort to importing it usually from the North Sea. Their national dish isn't even really found naturally in their own country. But what does occur naturally in Portugal are the Portuguese people. Let's meet them, shall we? Demographics. Um, how many people do you do I think live there in Portugal? I'm I'm really not sure. I would guess something with 10, 15 something million, but it could also be eight million. So I'm not sure. By the way, um, the thing I want to um show you here is this. Maybe you can read it. I um, hope you can. I hold still. So, um, it's French. It's not Portuguese. It's a it's a calendar I got from Christmas. And now, um, I will read the quote for today. Le le dessin n'est pas la forme, il est la manière de voir la forme. Um, I will hopefully put also it's from Edra Deges, an artist. Um, uh, a Pentre Francais. I will hopefully put the quote on the screen for you so you can read it. Um and and I am not I understand it. I don't understand it. Everything. Um it is something um I think the drawing is not a um form um it is a I don't know what manière means, um the voila form. But uh, I will take a look now on the back side of the. It's uh, from the 3rd of January. So still a few days before today. It's today. Today is the uh, 6th January. January 6th. Two years ago, I think, was a riot in, in Washington. Hmm. Ah, so. Uh, Manier means uh, art. In German, um, in English, it would be a type, maybe a good word. So the drawing is not the shape. Mm, it is a, um, a type as we see the shape or something like this. I will hopefully put a better, better translation um, in the in the video. Here again, uh, the front side and the back side. I mean, it's German's backside, so I will make an English translation, hopefully, and and we continue now with the video. I just wanted to show you this um as a small um thing uh yeah. So we will continue now with um uh, Portugal demographics. I say twelve million. Let's see if I'm completely wrong or kind of right. Thank you, Noah. <sighs> Keith again. Art, take care of this. Oh my God. Oh! You're welcome. Now, I asked João to describe the Portuguese, and here are some things he said. Desenrascanso. Uh, it's like a resource. Resourcefulness of race. Fullness of ways. So, if you give us like a corkscrew and a frisbee, we'll give you a scooter. Another one is estar com os azeites. When someone is really grumpy or in a real bad mood. To sum it up, that's the ideal Portuguese way. In any case, the country has about 10.5 million people. Okay, 10.5 is what it means. It was a bit, a bit too much, I guess, but it was not far ahead. It was not uh, 40 million, it was not 2 million. So, kind of okay. Kind of. People, and they are one of the top aging populations in the world and has the highest emigration rate in the EU. The exact numbers are Let's get some uh, snackies.
are not always completely reliable, but many sources on average report that somewhere around 90 to 95% of the population identifies as Portuguese. But that term is very broad as there are many different types of Portuguese people that look totally different from the others. Some of them are blonde hair and blue eyed and some are tan and olive and brunette. Either way, Portuguese. The remainder of the five to 10% of the population comes from all over the world, mostly Europe and former colonial states like Brazil, Angola, and Mozambique, and even a small Asian minority as well, mostly Macau Chinese and India from Goa and Damam and DU. They use the Euro as their currency, they use the Type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, in Portugal, the official language is Portuguese, a Latin-based Romance language. It's actually related to the Galician language in North Spain, and usually the two can pretty much understand each other. And weirdly enough, Galicians and North Portuguese people have Celtic roots. We'll talk more about that in the Spain episode. But anyway, Portugal also technically has a second regionally official language, Mirandese, which is only spoken by about 15,000 people in two municipalities of the Northeast region. But otherwise, okay, just being straight up, Portuguese is the most difficult Latin language for me personally. But after spending some time in Portugal, I figured out a shortcut if you wanna learn how to speak Portuguese, here's how you do it. Step one, be Russian. Step two, get drunk. Step three, try to speak Spanish. Meu nome é Paulo, eu gosto de pastiche. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I I, I can't uh, speak Russian. I never drink alcohol, so uh, it should in this way be difficult for me to speak Portuguese. But it's it's interesting. It's funny. Calm down, this was a joke. Geography Now does not endorse underage drinking or alcoholism. And also, do not confuse the Portuguese with the Spanish. They hate that. Actually, when I met João, I had this conversation with him. Mm. Similar to um, Austria and Germany, you know. Um, if you say to someone from Austria, Hey, do you speak German? Don't do this. <laughs> I mean, um, they speak a type of German. As I said also in the Austrian episode, mm, Switzerland speaks a type of German. Even Germany speaks a German type language. And also Austria. But it's not German. It's just, um, you could say, um, a Germanic language. But then also English is a Germanic language. And um, also Scandinavian languages like Swedish, um, Danish, and so on. are also Sc um, Germanic languages. From the Germanic family, um, but yeah, not do this, not miss, um, sing this. No, Alexis. Hey, João. Yes. When I go to Portugal, would it be okay if I spoke some Spanish, just in case if I had a complete communication problem? Yeah, no, don't. Just don't. Trust me, you're better off just using English. So anyway, the Portuguese, as mentioned, have a lot of ocean history and Catholic roots. About eighty. As soon as they get along. Sp Spain and Portugal, they get along, but they don't like to be confused with one another. So there's Portugal and there's Spain. Like there's Austria and Germany. Also Austria and the German probably people are very very uh, understanding each other. I mean they they get along. Also their governments get get along, but they don't like if you confuse their country. So if I go to Sp 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 Portugal and think, hey, you are just a Spanish um, uh, um, colony or so, and uh, or who you also speak German, you must be also part of Germany. I mean, to, uh, to say to an Austrian guy, it's both not good. Just just speak um, their language or sp speak English. If you come if you come from some other part of the world. 1% of the country identifying to varying degrees of devotion as Roman Catholic. The Portuguese aren't too quick to note that they did kind of start the Atlantic slave trade, although keep in mind the East African slave trade was actually started centuries prior by Arabs in the Indian Ocean. Moving on! Portuguese culture comes in many fascinating vibrant forms of tradition and custom, and with that, here's Random Hannah to explain. <laughs> Portugal today is a very distinct nation, but if you dig close, you can see the layers of influence from groups like Phoenician, the Celtic, Germanic, Visigoth, Vikings, Sephardic, Jewish, and Moorish people. Yeah, even Vikings. And don't you forget it. Of course, as intrepid maritime folk, the Portuguese were the first to invent galleon ships that launched off the Age of Discovery for Europe, post-Viking era. With that, they also created the first forms of Western-style nautical cartography and navigation. It would later be taught 
bought and used across the continent. One guy even tried to pioneer one of the first airship designs. Although Portugal may not be well known for their painters or graphic arts, I mean, this dude went crazy and burned every single one of his paintings except one. They definitely have a tradition of three-dimensional expression that dates back centuries. Distinct Portugal styles include things like Manueline architecture of the 16th century, and even today, people like Bordalo II continue the tradition of three-dimensional art. Fun fact, you can probably- This is also amazing, um, so three-dimensional um, um, sculptures. Bordalo II continued the tradition of three- So this, is, for example, looks also awesome. Are these dogs? Or something else? I'm not sure. They kind of look, but then also, the, again, they look- I mean, the first time I saw them a moment ago, they looked very much like dogs, but now I think they are looking more some, some, like some other creatures. I'm not sure about creatures, but if you know, tell me. Three-dimensional art. Fun fact, you can probably guess a home is Portuguese if the exterior walls have tiles on them, and often blue pattern tiles. They have their own unique Portuguese sport, where you have to knock off a pen with metal discs in varying weights and sizes. Nonetheless, no shocker, soccer or football is the most popular sport with their oldest club dating back to 1893 in Porto. Their national team has consistently ranked high in FIFA standings. We all know Ronaldo is the most mainstream, noteworthy face of Portuguese football today, I mean, the guy has multiple statues of himself. The legendary Eusebio is considered one of the greatest football icons of all time and the symbol of the nation's sport. Festivals, of course, adorn the entire nation from north to south, many rooted in Catholic tradition. June is a huge month where the Festival of the Three Saints take place all over the country, honoring St. Anthony, John, and Peter, where there's a lot of wine and sardines with fireworks. There's also many unique regional festivals like the Festa de Coco, in which they do fun dragon slaying performances. There's the Lazarine Carnival, one of the only places where Celtic rituals can be seen. Anyways, the festivities are usually filled with music, which I guess means we're moving on to Keith's segment. Uh, Alright, starting as early as Gregorian chants in the medieval ages, evolving into the classical era, and eventually winning Eurovision, Portugal has had lots of musical accolades. And there's a certain word that kind of describes the overall feeling of Portuguese-ness when it comes to music. Saude. Saudade. It translates to something like a sense of melancholy and longing as if something were missing. Uh, this type of mindset is one of the key elements that inspired the most famous of all Portuguese musical genres, Fado. It's even listed as a UNESCO heritage trait. The most recognizable name with Fado being Amalia Rodriguez. Listen to it and see what you think. Portuguese have their own version of guitars, drums, accordions, even bagpipes. Do you- I don't- I listen to music, of course, but um, not as much as maybe others and I, 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 I just like music, some music, but I'm not such a music specialist. Galele from Hawaii was actually introduced from the Portuguese migrants, mostly from the Azores and Madeira Islands, where my ancestors are actually from, fun fact. Today, the Portuguese music scene has everything from mainstream hip hop, rock pop, metal, Moonspell being one of the more popular metal bands from Portugal. Uh, one time I saw Moonspell at I think it was Ozfest. I don't remember. Moon spells awesome. And thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, we gotta move on to the incredibly condensed history section. Proto-Iberian cultures, Indo-European migrations, Atlantic bronze. There was once a Iberian a Iberian Union, oh, where Portugal and Spain became one country and through some monarchies uh, or some some it, something something happens and then they became one country for a small period of time. I think it's just a few years, but yeah. Age, Lisbon founded, Phoenicians, Proto-Celts, Rome comes in, Christianity, persecution of Christians, Visigoths, Vandals, Moors, Muslim years, Vikings come in briefly from the north parts, fighting, fighting, blah, 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 they get their first king after independence from Lyon, uninhabited Madeira and Azores Islands discovered, Age of Discovery kicks off, Atlantic slave trade, colonies established, Inquisitions, Great Earthquake of 1755, Napoleon years, First Constitution, Last Monarch deposed, Republic, World War I joins Allied forces, World War II gets messy, Salazar begins 
begins his reign. Colony wars in Africa. Colonies gain independence, but Timor is still on hold. New constitution joins EU. World's Fair Expo releases Macau, releases East Timor. Hipster shops and trendy yet pretentious warehouse district cafes open up. And here we are today. We asked you guys for a list of some of the top. That's also something I heard before that Portugal um, was claiming onto its colonies the longest from all the European countries. Um, and fought some devastating wars in um, Africa to hold them. Um, it's also something I heard. It's all over now, but yeah, interesting. Notable people from Portugal or of Portuguese descent, and they include people like Prince Henry the Navigator, even though he never really did any exploring himself, Bartolomeu Dias, Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan, these athletes, these two popes, Nobel Prize winner in medicine, Egas Moniz, the greatest writers, Luis de Camões, Fernando Pessoa, and Jose Saramago, Daniela Rua, Carmen Miranda, Maria Joao Pires, Sara Sampeo, Paula Rego, and some American and Canadian celebrities that have Portuguese descent include Nelly Furtado, Sean Mendes, one of my favorite animators. JG Quintel, even Tom Hanks, and uh, this guy, I guess. Uh, you got Portuguese, right? Yeah, totally, man. Great grandfather was actually born. He was born in the Madeira Islands. Keith Everett. Well, as you can see by now, with their bold exploring roots, Portugal has definitely left its mark on the world. And with that, we move on to see how the mark has impacted their relationships. I think they uh, get along with uh, Spain. They don't want to, of course, to be confused with Spain, um, as mentioned before. But they, I think they get along. And um, with the former colonies, maybe also, I'm not sure. Let's find out. To others around the world. In. Yeah, Portugal is kind of like the smallest nation that left the biggest legacy. Over 30 times more people than the population of Portugal across the world speak Portuguese than in Portugal. For one, they have the longest official alliance between two countries on earth with the UK. Forged in 1373, they have been working alongside the British for a long time and have developed numerous bilateral policies and trade deals. Long story short, the Portuguese introduced tea to the British and the British helped them get cod. For France, Portugal is kind of like the lean Latin boy next door who keeps trying to flirt with France even though she's kind of dating Germany. There are more Portuguese people living abroad in France than any other nation at about 2 million. The Portuguese love the French. They enjoy the laissez-faire culture and charm and have integrated very well into French society. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to have encountered the Japanese and much of the historical interaction reverberates to this day culturally. I mean, they founded the port city of Nagasaki and even the word arigato is derived from the Portuguese word obrigado. Even when Japan was isolated, they traded for centuries only with the Portuguese. Even though things got messy in the 60s, and 70s, they still have close ties to their former colonies, especially Brazil, Angola, and to some extent Mozambique. Many of these people have recently moved in on separate migration waves, and today you can see many of them in major cities like Lisbon and Porto. Billions of dollars are traded with Angola annually, and Portugal even cancelled Mozambique's remaining debts from independence to 2005 at nearly $400 million. Brazil is their biggest legacy. It's like the sun they fed steroids and became a massive giant bodybuilder. Today, the Brazilian... <laughs> I um right also that uh, at some point uh, um when there is, when it was still one country um Fran um Portugal and Brazil um when Napoleon came up um that the uh, king uh, was also then moving to Portugal and it was the only time that a European country was governed from one of its colonies I think um. Then they, it got split up um, a bit later, I think, when the king returned and the son remains in Portugal so, and founded his own empire, so something like this. I'm not sure exactly about the circumstances, um, but something like this. But interesting. The dialect of Portuguese is more widely taught and distributed in media than actual Portuguese Portuguese, and even after independence, the two have shared a privileged family bond that will always have high favor towards the other. For what it's worth though, when it comes to their best friend, most Portuguese- Kind of, uh, is Portugal is a little colony of Brazil. <laughs> I mean, from land size and people. But anyway, who cares? They get along, hopefully. Portuguese might begrudgingly hate to admit it, but they kind of, at the end of the day, will always walk side by side with their oldest friend, Spain. Portugal was actually the first nation that fully emerged out of the Iberian Peninsula back when Spain was a bunch of disjointed kingdoms. Since then, they've been rivals and adversaries. During colonial years, they competed to see who could take over the Americas better. They've had centuries of conflict and treaties, alliances, unions, arguments. But in the end, they just have that Iberian culture and Latin root that ties them in so closely as brothers. In conclusion. <laughs>
We say that we like to keep things moderate and simple, but our history is anything but moderate and simple. Our love of water kind of spilled over into a global empire phenomenon that even us probably didn't see coming. Today the Portuguese legacy lives on. Stay tuned! Cutter is coming up next. I, I reacted a bit to Cutter, but um, anyway. I mean, I'll react to Spain soon. Maybe not this um, days, maybe it takes a bit longer, but I will react to it. If you want me to react to a specific country, just write it down in the comments. Subscribe for my channel. Follow me on Twitter and especially Twitch if you if you want to um you know um have some contact with me and then we can um talk about things, culture, politics, um geography. I can even uh, even ga play some games there. And uh, if you have suggestions for some games which um I do have and uh, can play. Then uh, also write in the comments. Um, I have no schedule on Twitch, so I just uh, from time to time I stream, and then um, we can talk about everything. Mm. Not personal stuff, of course, because I remain the secret unknown thing. You only see my hands, hear my hands, um, greet my hands, and subscribe and like, but you can't see my face, of course. So that's sad for you, or not sad, or lucky. I'm not sure. Who cares? <laughs> Just I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you again in the next video. Goodbye.